happy y'all are in this space right now because baby, I have brought the experts in the house. <laughs> uh, today, we know that it's all about keeping our leads in close proximity so that when they are ready to buy, whether it's six months from now, three days from now, two years from now, yes, sometimes it takes two years for people to convert. Um, we know that community creation is really the secret sauce to, you know, keeping people warm and in close proximity, but it's really hard to keep people engaged. It's really hard to keep uh, the churn rate low, right? So I brought the sisters in the house who can explain all the things they do to really nurture, foster, grow, uh, and enhance even as they go their community. So ladies, let's start with you all introducing yourselves. Um, we can start with Rafi, then we'll go to Sharon. We'll let Christina take it. And then Shelly, introduce yourselves, tell who you are, whatever it is you want to share about yourself and um, you know your company that you have community a part of. Hi, my name is Rafi Wagner. I am a occupational therapist turned podcast strategist. And in my community, I just uplift the voices of anyone who kind of fits the bill, which is someone who believes in um, equality, inclusion, and much, much more. My goal is to help anybody who's looking to do a podcast from idea to launch, even a podcast that has like kind of, you know, faded out, bring it back to life and everything in between. And I am so honored to be here. Sharon, we'll pivot to you, mama. I am Sharon Drapo. I, um, I am the CEO of the Drapo Collective. Um, the Drapo Collective hosts she Breathes Life, as well as Market Done. Market Done is my copy business that I started, ooh, some years ago. And, <laughs> and now I'm pivoting into uh, personal development coaching. Uh, I, I like to sit at the cross section of how the heck did I get here and how do I get to where I want to be? Um, I'm so, my pillars are so much centered around community and self-care and self-restoration and ultimately self-discovery. I enjoy helping women peel back the layers on who they are so that they can be a better version of themselves. Um, I don't like to change women. I like to help them improve upon what they already want to change. Uh, and I like to do that through community. I think community is exactly where everybody thrives. Hashay, thank you. Christina? Hey, ladies. Welcome, what, welcome on in. We're happy to have you here. My name is Christina Danielle. I am a purpose alignment coach. And what I do is I help women and entrepreneurs to operate pro profoundly in their confidence so they can prosper in their purpose. I've written three different books. I've curated four different master classes. I've started a podcast. I've done a myriad of things, but the most important thing that you need to know is that I'm a real person, R-E-A-L, and not R-E-E-L. And in a world where people are trying to be everyone else rather than themselves, it's so important important that we're authentic to who we are. So this is what I do and I am so excited to be here today. Love it. Thank you, Mama. Shelly. Hi y'all. Shelly Bell. Um, I am a, a, a CEO of a consulting business that I started. I'm in the revamping stage now, so I'll get to that later. Um, I also am a Rotarian. We uh, focus, my club specifically focuses on combating human trafficking. Um, and my hot buttons are women and children. Um, I believe that, and I'm also a power networker. Um, I can go in any room, make it move and shake. And I believe that building that community also helps build your network because your net worth, it, your network is your net worth, as they say. And being able to not only give, but also being able, able to know the right people to ask for that next thing that you may need um, is a beautiful thing. So um, I like being engaged with all of the women here. I'm very excited to be here to just talk about how I like 
like to move about in order to advance, as well as, again, learn. I believe that reciprocation is something that is, um, especially in this day and age, it's like, what can you do for me? But it's also, what can I do for you? Because if I move forward, you move forward. And the more you grow, the more I'm going to grow, because that's the more you know. So I'm excited to be speaking here, especially in regards to uh, communication. Oh, and also, I also work in tech. So being one of the only people that looks like me in the tech industry um, can be quite a challenge and I don't want I don't want to be there alone somebody else come on and join me so um I'm excited to be here to speak with y'all and hang out and you know the DJ was fire so I'm excited thank you uh so 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 fire I'm still on cloud nine um and and honestly like I am just so thrilled about the diversity on this panel today because community creation has happened in a multitude of ways and I'm so happy that we don't hear these you know monolithic explanations of the perfect way to drive community because that does not exist even within the cohort of Black female entrepreneurs so uh let's get into it let's get into it so um You've talked about, you know, you know who you are, where you come from, some of the different hats you wear, uh, but I really want to understand why community, right? There's so many ways to do business, right? Transactional online things, right? Uh, high ticket one-on-one -on -one things. Why is community such a critical part in the way that you do business? Uh, Raffi, let's start with you. Um, absolutely. For me, I find, and I like to believe that community is a foundation. So you're building a house and the community is that foundation. You need that community and you also need to think about the community as you're building everything. So building and creating, you always go back to your foundation. Content, you always go back to your foundation. But in today's world, especially in today's world, we need to build relationships. We can't just do transactional things and expect to be seen, heard and found and expect to be seen as our as the expertise in our field. We need to build relationships. And there's an amazing way to do that. And that is building a community. And also, I feel that a community is also <clears throat> the best to go, the best route to go because the uncertainty of today's platforms, whether you want to call it a social media platform or whatever platform, these platforms are so uncertain. Not only that, the platforms are so misaligned for our values and our beliefs that I think that's almost more important than the, the certainty of the technology of the platform. I will go to a platform that's more aligned with me and take that chance than I would otherwise. So it's really kind of, I kind of feel like a community is like, you know, waving your arms and like, I'm over here, you know, and you share everything that you believe in your values and everything. And that's the best way to start these relationships in business. Love that Rafi. And, and, and she's saying something that is very powerful, right? You cannot depend on these social media platforms, right? Because as soon as they change an algorithm and decide that some feature is better than another, you have lost touch literally uh, with the traditional way that you have interacted with your following. So a follower does not mean you have their email addresses and without their email addresses, you don't know, right? That they get the content in the way that best serves them. And without getting the content, how are you gonna match the relationship, right? So I think that was a huge bar, especially as we are seeing the decline, quite literally y'all, um, in engagement and user time on these platforms as people are looking for decentralization. I'm telling y'all, like the, the theme of this is, the theme of this summit is fast forward to the future. People are looking for decentralized ways to consume content. I love that, Rafi. Um, all right, let's pivot. Uh, why community? Why is community such a big part of your business model? Um, community is a big part of my business model because it's a big part of who I am. It's how I thrive. It's how I, it's where I get my energy. Um, one of the things that I talk about is the three communities that we all need. We need our professional, our personal, our intrapersonal. And knowing your intrapersonal community, that's the community of self understanding who you are, like, like Rafi said, knowing who you are, knowing what your values are, that's going to tell you exactly where you belong, but it's also going to tell you exactly what it is that you need. What are those intersections that, that, that paint, excuse me, paint the image of the community you want to be a part of? Do you want to be a part of, you know, the wig loving, planner loving, MCU loving community, 
Do you want to be a part of a community that is talking about politics and religion and money, all the things that your mama told you not to talk about? Um, and when you find that community, uh, you, you can thrive there because you know that these are the people that are going to allow you to talk about the things you want to talk about. There is freedom in those communities. So when you build a community based on shared values, you know that those people want the same things you want. You know that those people are looking for what you're looking for. You know what I mean? It, and it, it, I love the idea of it takes a village. So it takes a village. It takes that community to build everybody up. It takes, a, it takes that village, that community to build up that business, to build up the awareness, to build up the, the know-how, to build up the skills for all of its members. And so that's one of the reasons, that's one of the things that I pour into community is resources, is connection, is culture. So those are all the things that I like to pour back into community and I hope that they always pour back into me. She breathes life, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, I, I think that you speaking about the intersectionality, right, of people's identities is so important because that's what they're looking for, right? Like, I think that's a huge part of why people are, are, are running for decentralization. If you think about what's happening on Facebook, Instagram, and these traditional sites for gathering people, algorithms are deciding today <laughs> what is appropriate and not appropriate, right? And their bias towards the people who have the biggest bag, right? The biggest investors, what they think is appropriate and not appropriate. And we're not always represented in those rooms, right? So we could either, you know, try to change people's minds and, and beg and beg and beg for years, or, right, we can do what all these ladies on this panel are doing and they are creating cultures, you know, that they moderate. They're, they are protecting their people. They are allowing for people to talk about stuff that mama didn't say was, you know, was, was, was good for a woman to talk about, right? I think that's so dope, Sharon. Um, thank you for that perspective. Shelly, what about you? Why is community such a big part of your business model? Um, for me, again, um, I like what you said, Sharon. Uh, everything you said, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm totally with it. Um, for me, uh, community is super important because number one, it will help foster and build your business and grow and create that engagement. But also for me, like I was, my background, I was a professional makeup artist for years. I got into politics and I pivoted to tech because I'm always putting myself out there. I'm, a, I'm not always trying to be in the same room and run with the same people. I'm about exposure. I, I want to know what else is out there. I want to know um, the things I don't. So um I uh, had the chance to travel to India with the Rotary and I still have those contacts today because you never know what you don't know. So, um, and being able to um, connect with people that are in another realm, that just brings in more revenue, more ideas, collaboration on, on something you could never build on your own. So I believe that creating a community that is open um, I tell people I'm, I'm sex positive. I don't mind talking about sex. My mom talked to me about sex at a very young age, but her mom didn't as much. So changing that narrative, be it something so simple as that or something bigger, like talking about making money, talking about working together. Um, so um, I believe that engaging your community. And again, I like to always say, uh, if I'm asking for something I'm giving something back. I want to. So um, building building yourself up and knowing that you're a pillar in your own community um, and you drive your needle forward and getting that motivation. And when people see you do that, they want to do the same thing. If people see you working, they want to work next to you. They see your sweat equity, they give the same. So um, that's what I find really important. Um, and again, networking and moving in a room. Talk, I leave no stone unturned. I'll try to a janitor. A janitor can be the CEO of the building, but he likes to clean. So um, not thinking you're better than anybody, but knowing where you can learn and grow from others has really helped me in my career, being able to move and pivot in so many different silos of life. Like I saw a meme that said, I've lived my fourth life already. I've lived, I'm living my 17th life and I don't know how many more I got in me. I'm really tired, but I'm, I'm, I'm still ready to go. I'm revved up. I'm revved up. So that's what I, that's my belief. I love that too. Exposure. That's something we haven't talked about yet. Exposure. Proximity to power is so lit, y'all. You know, when we, uh, we're talked to about exposure in the nine to five. We couldn't do nothing with that exposure. We were still waiting on the time clock of somebody else who believed we paid enough dues, right? So exposure was nothing you could put in your 
water at home and boil it on the on the stove and feed your family with. But when you're talking about communities built by people who love up on you, you instantaneously get into mentorship relationships. You instantaneously collaborate and make revenue, man. You instantaneously get on their podcast and they get on yours and you double your exposure in a single interaction, right? Um, so I love that Shelly. And if, if, if y'all don't take anything else from what she said, moving that fearless energy. She said, when I walk in the room, I'm flipping over every stone, baby. <laughs> I love that. I love, love, love that. Super dope. Uh, and last, but definitely not least on this question, Christina, could you tell us why community is such an integral part of your business model? Yeah, absolutely. First and foremost, I have to clap it up for all the ladies on this panel because these answers are amazing, like really amazing. And I know um, as everyone is watching this, you're taking your notes, you're ready to go out there and either start or restart your communities. Um, so shout out to all the ladies that are on here. Um, but community is so important and pivotal for for me in my business is because it's it's the truth for me, right? You can't hide from who you are when you build a community because at some point the truth is going to come out. And what happens is without a community, if you're hiding in the shadows of someone else or social media, people won't know the real you, right? But in a community that you built, they're only going to re realize the real you. And that actually brings me to what I like to call the three H's. And the first H that I like with my, what I've done with my community is healing, right? I started communities for healing. So if whoever is watching this, when we think about healing, this can be an internal healing. This can be a money healing, which is why Shelly was talking about getting into those rooms and networking, because maybe you're not good with finances. Maybe you're not good with money, but you want to be, right? When you start networking, like Shelly said, you heal that part of you that says, hey, I didn't know how to deal with money, but because I've created a community and now I have other people in the community who may be able to help with healing and because they came for something that I was able to help them with and help them to heal, now we have built out a bigger community. And so the first part is healing. And then the second part is help. Community, you have help in a community. You're not alone, especially in a world where a lot of people feel like they're by themselves. Um, I know when I started my community, I felt like I was alone. And I said to myself, you know, I felt like there was no one who was giving what I needed, right? And I know there's other people out there that feels like there's no one giving what I need, but how about you be the person that gives what you need and then you attract others who also need what you got to give, right? And so you get help in your own community. And then you go from healing to helping to own, honing on in on your skills, right? So you build this community, you hone in on your skills. So the things that you are, are good at, now you become great at it because you're doing it over and over again. You're doing it with other people. You're not alone anymore. And so community really helps to, to heal what you've been hiding from because a lot of us are hiding We're like we don't know how to do this and we don't know how to do that it's okay community the be beautiful thing about community is you don't have to be perfect <laughs> you don't have to be perfect right and you connect with people who can help you along the way and I think that's so beautiful because I no longer have to hide because I've got help um so for me it's about the healing the help and honing in on those skills so community is super important for those reasons Man, I threw my shoe now. I threw my shoe in here. Christina is preaching a sermon. <laughs> uh, so many times we hear that it's lonely at the top, right? And we hear, we're, we're, in, we're indoctrinated with that over and over and over again. And sis is saying it don't have to be though. <laughs> you have help. It doesn't have to be. You get to practice your skills over and over and over again. You get to be vulnerable enough to be imperfect in plain sight and still be the leader. That is so fire you know because i tell people all the time to come through blaze where's my phone if if apple can can push me an update every single night and i don't throw away the one thousand one thousand five hundred dollar phone i can absolutely show up and iterate as i go for my computer for my community i can absolutely show up and iterate as i go and get feedback on my products perfection for what right perfection for what uh you whoo, you preach the whole sermon i can't even whoo, um yeah, y'all drop hearts in the chat if y'all were feeling that. Oh, um, all right, we're just getting started, y'all. We we just getting started. So love all of that. Um, Shelly, I want to pivot over over to you. So 
community creators are quite literally becoming the new gatekeepers to getting consumers, right? Um, big brands, I mean, the hugest brands are now going to communities who can better speak to these intersectionalities that big, exec, big execs can't speak to, right, uh, in order to get their brands in front of the people they want to serve, right, in front of the people they want to, you know, buy their products. So, and this is unprecedented. I want to tell everybody out there that's just getting started, you are not too late. You are just in time. Okay, you are just in time. Shelly, you're particularly passionate about the intersection of tech, authenticity, engagement, and networking, right? Can you tell us why that is the case? And, um, you know, is there anything that entrepreneurs need to be thinking about as they think about the intersection of these things? Again, tech, authenticity, engagement, and networking. So, of course, and thank you for asking. Um, <clears throat> Again, Ms. Christina, Danielle, you blowing it out the water, okay? Uh, <laughs> we all are, but that was that was really good. I like those three H's. Um, for me, again, I um I have a, a, a plethora of background and just being me who I am authentically, um, I like to start there. I tell people I'm authentically myself and so true to myself. I'm I haven't changed. I've grown in different areas, but I feel like when I do show up somewhere to network. And specifically, if it's going to be in a situation where I know I want to connect with people for a specific purpose, I go in there with that and then I'm authentically myself. And so I feel like when I'm authentically myself, it gives other people the runway to be authentically themselves. Um, I can tell you how many times, you know, you walk up to somebody, they're stone faced, you, you project onto them something positive or something moving forward and then they give that back um, and then their wall is cut down that's one of my networking skills is just to be able to kind of identify while also knowing that there's a line don't let people project onto you if it's not something positive um, so the the authentic part of it all is really important and then being able to pivot because like I said I'm a woman in tech and it's I've been in a room where I'm the only person that looks like me. And I've been in rooms where there are CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. Um, and just being able to know that you are, you are also that. I don't care. I tell people I'm the CEO of me. Even before I had a business, I'm the mayor of me. So I'm somebody too. Never let anybody belittle you. You know, when you go in that room or wherever you're navigating your business or your life to, and I believe this personally and professionally, know that you, ha you have something of value. You have something that people need and want to talk to you about. And if they don't, and they give you some kind of weird vibe, they're not your audience. They're not your community. And please feel free to let them go because you don't want the wrong people around you anyways. So um, that authenticity, authentic, okay, you know the word. <laughs> the engagement, the networking. Um, and then at the end of the day, you can't get around it. I, I wanted to be a woman in tech so bad because I know that, me being a black woman in tech is so rare that I'd be able to move in rooms I would never be able to. And I don't want to be here alone. I'm, I'm looking to reach back to pull people with me. So, you know, if anybody's interested, let me know. Um, I love to talk because I think it's so important because you're not going to, everybody has a cell phone. Even, even a flip phone has a, a, a wafer semiconductor chip in it. So tech is not going anywhere. It's just getting deeper down the rabbit hole. So we have to know what's going on. We have to be aware and abreast and be in those rooms. So that's why it's really, really important to me. Um, and that's why I do what I do. Super dope. And, um, you know, I want to, you know, with this picture that Shelly is painting of being in the rooms with people who may have titles of stature that seem different than yours, but knowing that you are just as, just as grand, just as great, right? Um, CEO of your life, your company and everything else. Um, you know, to put this in the context for the entrepreneur, you know, y'all need to be in these rooms. Let me say that one more time. The mic turned up. Y'all need to be in these rooms because your numbers are what these brands are after. There are sponsors for this very summit right here. And do you know why they've showed up? Even though they don't look like me, they don't have black braids. Hello, huh? They don't have melanated skin, not all of them, not most of them, right? But because I could show the engagement numbers. 
I could show the registration numbers. I could show the people from the last summit, right? This is why they're coming through us because they have not been able to figure out how to penetrate the black community in this way. But they want us, you know, they want to serve us. They want to help us. When you come in these rooms, you know, be armed with the understanding of what value your community has, right? And speak up, you know, um, the, the, the likes, the engagements, the, the number of people that tuned into your event, the number of people that click links, right? The number of people that give feedback, like all of these things are what these very brands want because their numbers are lower than yours. Is my mic on. Their numbers are lower than yours, right? So this intersection we're talking about is so important. It's not just about you pouring down. It's about people coming through you, asking your permission to get to your people too, right? So that they live in the land of plenty. Um, thank you so much, Shelly. Love, love, love that. Um, so, Christina, I want to I want to double click on this authenticity piece, um, and I know it's right up your alley, Mama. <laughs> um, so, community creation is a journey. I love you know when we were talking about you you being a part of this discussion. You described it as a journey, um, and I couldn't agree more. It doesn't just take off at the onset of community creation, right? Um, it takes a, a, a creator deciding to study the audience and establish, you know, a culture and really get feedback and, and iterating to know what works really, really well. Um, so for you, authenticity seems to be like a big part. You even, you've even talked about it in your introduction, um, like a big part of how you are able to build a successful community. How does authenticity show up for you as a leader and what should other leaders be thinking about if anybody's struggling with the authenticity piece? Yeah, thank you so much for the question. Um, authenticity is huge for me and I'm gonna be 100% transparent with you guys. The reason why authenticity is so important to me is because I was the one who was hiding for years hiding for years and I know someone is listening and they can relate to that and they're like me too and so I want to start by telling you no more hiding no more hiding one of the things that took me out of hiding was realizing whose blood is on my hands because I won't step into the light that God has created me to step into I was scared that I was not doing what he has called and created me to do. And if I wasn't doing it, somebody else was suffering because I would not step up. And so authenticity is that type of important to me where I have to be 100% who I am. Because one, you got to think about the no like and trust factor, right? We hear about this all the time in business in order to have sales, in order to have clients, customers, people have to know, like, and trust you. And that's not just about the number when it comes to the money, but it's also about building your community right? People have to know who you are. That's the first part of it. How do they know who you are if you don't know who you are? And how do they know who you are if you don't tell them the truth of who you are? So yeah, we can show up on social media, post the beautiful pictures, they speak to the gods. But what's really going on in the background? How's your life really happening? What do you do when adversity comes at you? What are you doing when you fail at something? What is your response to that? Are you reacting? Because I always teach in my community, the difference between react and respond, right? Because reaction is based off your emotion. Response is based off a thought. Do you take the time to think before you say or move? And so you got to understand showing people how to get to know you is very, very important. It is. It comes for everything else. They can't like you or trust you until they know you. And they can't know you if you're not putting yourself out there authentically you. Second part of that, Casey, how you know how difficult it is to be fake? It is so difficult. You think most people think that it's easy, but it is so difficult, right? Because something's going to happen and it's going to show your true colors. That's why people say when people show you who they really are, believe them, believe them, because you can act a certain way. But again, when adversity happens, when life starts lifing, because it will, how do you show up? How do you respond to these things? So being authentic was so important for me in building my community and it will always continue to be important to me. And for those of you who are out there and you're saying, hey, I'm afraid of people judging me by being authentic. I'm afraid of people shaming me. I'm afraid of feeling guilty. Guess what? Me too. And I say that because I want you to know, again, you're not alone, right? But if you tell your story, if you put your truth out there, no one could ever put a lie on you. Understand when you put your truth out there, you could no one could ever put a lie on you because you've already said it. So there's nothing to hide from. There's nothing to be ashamed of. As a matter of fact, you literally take all those things that you're ashamed of, you're guilty, you feel guilty about. You take that and you make it fuel to build your business. Everything I've created, Casey, I've literally done it from every mistake and every pain point that I've had. 
literally. And so um, that's why it's so important um, for me. It's so important in my community because I want the people in my community to show authentically them, right? If And I build confidence. And so I want to make this very clear because sometimes people hear about God and they're like, well, I can't be myself because what if I drink? What if I smoke? What if I do these different things, right? I want you to know none of that matters. <laughs> none of that matters. So allow people to show up authentically them you by you showing up authentically who you are and being just transparent. And I promise you, you will build the absolute best and strongest community ever because that's how you build people from the inside out and you help them. Listen, I don't have enough shoes to throw. So does anybody else want to add to comment on? Like, come on, what, what, what y'all want to say? I will say that I am right there with you mm -hmm. i am all yes mm -hmm. all the things thank you because when you <laughs> it is like the being fake i ain't got time for that who got time to be fake who got time to remember what they said to who and why uh-uh I got I'm known for not being a liar. People are like, you okay. never you don't lie. I'm like, I don't lie because I'm not going to remember what I lie. <laughs> hey, it's too much work. It's way too much work. I'm like, what did I say to you before? I don't want to have to do all that. I'm wasting time that I could be building my business in my community trying to remember what I said to you. And if I could have just told you the truth in the beginning and we keep it pushing, like, let's just do it. Let's just yes. do that. And I, I don't remember like, what I, I did yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> always say, listen, if there's something wrong with me, pray for me. That's it. <laughs> okay. Look, if you see something you don't like, you ain't got to tell me about it. Just pray on it and hope it can get better. Just keep it listening. You ain't got to tell me about it. You know? Love and just, look, talk about a beat face. Only reason my face looks like this is because my sister, a cosmetologist, we both in town at the same time. That's the only reason. You won't see me look like this every day. You see me look like this on Instagram, you better check what filter I'm using. Okay. I'm just saying. Because me and Bunny, we get along. <laughs> I've been this way since a, a teenager, okay? Since a child. I'm, this is who I am. This is who I'm going to be. Uh, I'm, I prefer not to change, actually. I will continue to grow. I will want to be enriched, but this is this is it. So either you're with it or you're not. Everybody doesn't like tea. Everybody doesn't like coffee, but people drink. So that's all, okay? Get, get your beverage of choice. <laughs> And I would say, Christine, I've been that person that you described. I've been her. Okay. I have been her. And I was like, okay. I have to. That's right. Like, this is, we're in a vein for a reason. This feels the way it does for us and all of y'all out there because this is so common, which is why healing must be a part of this entrepreneurial journey right? It's not your fault you're afraid. It's not your fault you feel like this because somebody has told you over and over and over again, you need to be a certain prototype to be successful, right? You need to be a certain prototype to be seen as professional. You need to be a certain prototype to fit in the room and not mess up and not blow your chance because you got the whole family and the community on your back, right? So what we are telling you, and we're being honest, you know, what we are telling you is radical. As simple as it sounds, it is radical for people that look like us. It is radical to think you can take up space, right? In a very visible thought leadership type way in your leadership by just being yourself. But what the lie has always been is fake it till you make it. The truth is be it until you see it. Whatever you are today, whatever, whatever chapter you are in, be it until you see it. We all got goals, sis, we ain't there today. Be it until you see it. And everybody that's supposed to intersect with you on your journey are going to show up because like Christina said, somebody's blood is on your hands because you are choosing not to show up. It's that deep. It's that deep. Love it, love it, love it. Y'all are so dope. Woo. Okay, 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 okay. Now, we have diversity on this panel. So one thing I'm really excited about diving into is podcasting because we have a true OG in the game <laughs> on this panel by the name of Raffi. Um, Raffi, I, I think podcasting is so cool because years and years ago, you know, it was a hot thing, right? And then you didn't hear a lot about it, but now it's popping back on the scene, right? It's a sexy thing to do. And those who are in the game for a while, they're not sweating. They're like, yeah, come on, let me add to my, you know, thousands of subscribers, right? So um, if you could demystify this area for people who are newer to it, can you please tell us how private and public podcasting can be leveraged to create, enrich, and engage communities? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, first, let me start off with a little bit of a 101. And that is a public podcast is the one that has an RSS feed that's fed out to the world. Mm. And then a private podcast is either one that's just by subscription behind a paywall or it's a paid podcast, but it requires steps to get to it. It's not a public facing RSS feed. So those are the differences. As far as podcasting goes, podcasting is such a unique, intimate way to connect with your audience, your community, your people, your customers, because podcasting is generally just one person listening to you in their earbuds. It's not a one, it's a one to many, but the actual process itself is intimate and it's generally just one person. Statistics show people don't listen to podcasts out on their speakerphone in the middle of a lunchroom at work. So there's a point where that intimacy creates that relationship that we've talked about throughout this whole presentation so far today. And that allows you to be speaking to one person. So even though it's a podcast reaching many ears, you are speaking to one person. And podcasting, the private podcast feed is almost, I think, even a better option when you're creating community um, because it can be a little less formal. It can be less edited. Um, it's almost like it's almost like it's expected not to be as edited because it's a it's an intimate type of process. Um, it's also very timely. I think you could use a, pr a private podcast to do grassroots efforts for your community. So whether you an advocate for women, children, politics, you know, climate change, whatever it is, you can use this as a grassroots effort to your people one-on-one, -on -one, send out messages quickly, early, you know, the news changes second by second around here. So this is an opportunity to get that message to your community. Um, with a podcast, whether it's private or not, private or public facing podcast, you have an opportunity to be kind of what you said just earlier, Casey, is radical. You can be radical. You could be polarizing. Almost consider a your podcast, your private or public podcast, think of it as a magnet. So it's your magnet. And whatever you say, you start to attract who you need to attract. It's very different than social media profiles. It's very different than anything else. Because on Instagram, we like things because we like the picture of it. We don't, sometimes we don't even read the captions, right? But if, a, if somebody likes your podcast and is subscribed to it, that means they like you. They like your values, your beliefs, your morals, everything. So think of a podcast as a magnet. So whether or not you want to do a private one or a public one, that's up to you. Um, and then as far as building community, we hear a lot as entrepreneurs a call to action. When you're doing a podcast in any format, you always have to have that call to action. You don't think you do, but you do. And you want to have one call to action. So you don't want to have a podcast episode and then send them eight different places. You want to have a podcast episode and send them to your community. So when you're thinking about a private podcast for a community, think of it as a qualifier for your community. Think of it as someone has listened to three episodes, they're generally probably liking you. So you start to warm them up. You use that call to action to your community. It may be episode four or it may be episode 40, but they're like, okay, I love her. Where do I go? So that's the way that you can warm them up. But always, if you're building your community, have that call to action to the community. Once they're on your email list or once they're in your community, then you can start to shine and share and do the three H's and all the different things, but you need to get them there. So those are ways you can get them there. As Black women, we also have to put up our protection. So what I would recommend that whatever you do for your community, maybe do a couple question um, type of opt-in where they have to like answer one or two kind of questions. Um, for me, I ask them if they've listened to my podcast, because if you've li listened to my podcast, you know the vibe. And so if they say no, I still may let them in or I may forward them into my community, but I just want to know that. So I have another community member that says, how long have you been following me on any social media platform or, or how long have you been listening to the podcast? So those are a couple qualifiers 
to make sure that we we create safe spaces, we ma maintain safe spaces. Um, and then as far as in getting engagement, I would say kind of marry your podcast with your community and go back and forth. So if you talk about something in your podcast, finish it in your community. If you start something in your community, finish it in the podcast. So that could be a back and forth relationship that bodes very well with engagement. Um, for community engagement, you need to think of things. You need to have prompt action reward ideas. Um, you need to have non-judgmental posts. So that can be from a podcast episode, you bring it into your community. Um, and then, you know, very, there's all a lot of other different things you can do. You can even interview community members on the podcast and vice versa. So there are so many ways to not only get people in your community, keep them engaged, keep them in the community. Um, retention, you could do things like shout outs. You can do community connections, those one-to-one -one interviews. You could do one to few, like have a panel like this, but have a panel of your community members do an episode, those kinds of things. So that's a lot. I hope everybody was taking notes. <laughs> All the gems, like we 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 are talking meat and potatoes on this. This is not some cute, yeah, side of community. Like this is real strategy, y'all. Um, and I want to double click on something you, you said, Raffi, if I can, retention, right? Because we haven't talked about retention yet. Thus far, Brian, let's, let's, let's contextualize this. We've talked about creating the community, right? How we nurture the people while they're there, right? How we leverage the people that are there, but we haven't talked much about churn, which means that there is for every community, I don't care how <laughs> dumb you are, there's a level of churn where people fall off. Either they completely unsubscribe, right? It's like, do not come over here again. And a lot of times your software will never let them come back in again. Um, or they just disengage and you don't hear from them, right? So you talked about retention, Rafi, and I want to double click on that. You know, how has podcasting helped you with retention or, depending on how you want to frame this, how can people tactically use podcasts, right, to, to keep retention inside of their communities? Um, I would say one example could be as a community, as I have quite a few communities and I've worked in clients' communities, a very important thing to do is prompts to engage that um, get that engagement, but you also want to kind of put things out there to get a vibe of your community. And so you could actually do, you know, what are we missing? You know, do very specific questions, one question at a time. Don't, you know, don't throw a question survey at somebody. One question, what are we missing? Or what would you like to see in this community? Or how can we support you? Or what is difficult for you today? Very specific one question things. Then you could take that and make it a podcast episode. And you can answer those questions. You can come up with a way to combat that. So if we do a, if we have a community of black women that are entrepreneurs, and right now they're really struggling with their marketing messages, you know, it, so it could be community related or not. We also have to remember our community members have lives, so they could be very heavy right now for them. So that could be a reason for, you know, a little disengagement and things like that. So it's important to kind of have a bank of questions and to kind of a strategy of making sure you tackle that and get it before they leave. That's the thing. You need to kind of catch the vibe before they leave. But if they do choose to leave, definitely have just a very quick, small survey where you know you can get feedback from them. And the key about surveys is you need to make them short and sweet. Like if I'm leaving a community, if I'm unsubscribing, chances are I'm not going to answer more than one to three questions at the most. And don't give me that big text area just kind of gave me like a scale of grading or something. So, because you always want to know, so you want to make it easy. Um, and I would even challenge you to maybe even do, if it's a public podcast, maybe even do a episode where you've asked people, why have you left communities? Like get engagement from, even if they're not necessarily in your community, wherever that lives, but it could just be a very general kind of like a market outreach kind of question. Um, because I do think we're, we would probably see very similar questions, very similar answers. And 
I may say I'm just no longer interested. Casey, you may say you're no longer interested, but we may have two completely different reasons why we're no longer interested. So that's also the beauty of asking those right questions. Love it, love it, love it. So um, just to make sure your, your, your notes, math is mathing. Uh, I want to give some, some buzzwords that people talk about on the external. So you tie it to this conversation out there, right? So when people are talking about mo uh, marketing, they talk about cold leads, right? And, and hot leads, right? And in between, in between is warm, right? So and what Rafi's talking about, if you have a cold lead, right? You don't say buy this for $14.99, like they're cold. They're going to keep scrolling. They're like, what are you talking about? So she's leveraging the podcast to warm them up, right? Maybe it's the first time you've come across her podcast, right? You don't even know about the community yet, right? You don't even know about what her products are. And at the end, her one call to action is warming them up, right? Or taking them while they're already warm. They made it to the end. They're probably warm and saying, here's the community. That's not, this is $14.99. It is, come on to the community. Still very low pressure, a little more, a little more work than, you know, listen to the podcast and then once they're inside and they hear about the wealth of other things like being at the, the, the mcdonald's drive through you're like oh they got chicken nuggets too it's not just a big neck right um that is the process of, of taking the lead from being cold to hot right um so very very tactical in that way and last one i want to point out just so we make sure you know the notes math is mathing um market research is so critical i'm gonna say this again market research even for you black woman who understands your people through and through and through market research is so important because data is non-emotional it doesn't matter how you're feeling on that day or who you're telling the thing to it doesn't matter how they're feeling data is non-emotional so if you are getting feedback from your audience and they're telling you i do not like when you do this right it doesn't matter if you spent 15 hours on that thing Something about it is off and it's turning off your community. Data is non-emotional and you'll know what to do then, right? Um, if somebody's saying, wow, I love this so much and you notice that that's the only thing out of everything you're doing that they love so much, maybe you want to think about, right, how to take that approach more often, right? Or how to extrapolate that into a few other things, right? So market research, even if you already have them on a the hook, is so important because it'll help you get like-minded people, right? Just like them. Um, love it. Y'all are dope. Love it so much. Um, okay. Okay. Keeping it flowing because we have a finite amount of time left. We are running out of it. Oh, I love this. I go on all day. Um, Sharon, let's, let's give it over to you, mama. So, what we know is the ugly truth is that some of us have been dropped into communities, not by our choosing, right, between childhood and adulthood, where uh, they've happened to be poisonous, right? They did not edify us in the ways that we deserve to be edified. They did not protect us. Um, they intentionally made us feel small and, and separate from the elite and all of these things. Um, and I know that's something that you, you know, are particularly passionate about um, and speak about. So I would like uh, for you to just share, you know, if, if you, uh, if you're comfortable being vulnerable, um, can you share some of your experiences in poisonous communities and how you would recommend that leaders do the work to protect the communities that they serve? I do deal with the deep stuff, don't I? <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, it's not always easy to recognize when you're in poisonous communities. Um, sometimes we're so caught up in it that like we can even mimic the, the very behaviors that we abhor. Like we like we, in, we get into that mean girls mentality, you know, that 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 we see. And I hate to see my daughter sometimes get caught up in that every once in a while, but I reeled her back in very quickly. Um, <laughs> but in those situations, um, as a community leader, when you see it happening, it's, it's very hard to watch. In my experience, um, it's often not until we've distanced ourselves or been exposed to the antithesis of the community, um, of the poisonous community, that we can see it for what it truly is. Um, so when you finally do recognize it um, for what it is, the best thing you can do is speak on it. Tell your truth, tell your story. Talk about the experience. Talk about your learned lessons. Um, read life into somebody else, you know? Uh, 
give the next person a little bit about your journey. Um, let them know what you learned if you see them going down the wrong path. If you see your community is not holding to the truth, remind them of the truth. Sometimes you got to get into mama mode or auntie mode, depending on, you know, where you what, what your pillars are. I'm more of a mother, you know. I get into auntie vibes sometimes, but mostly, you know, I'm, I'm a mom. So, you know, I'm very much like, I already know when I get to my 90s, I will be the grandma on the porch with brownies and cookies and trying to figure out why are you sneaking out the house? You ain't supposed to be doing that. Um, but uh, I digress. Um, but when you see those poisonous communities, the best thing that you can do as a leader is nurture it back to that foundation. Remember those roots. Remember why you started it. Start asking questions that stem from that pillar. I have a, I have a group of over 2,000 that is a community-focused group. Right now, we're dealing with some backlash that unfortunately I caused because I decided to sit on a panel called Dear White Parents. What was I thinking? And that caused a little bit of controversy. And I had to tell people, it's like, okay, this is an inclusive community where we talk about all community events, regardless of what they talk about, regardless of who they're for. If it's a community event, we talk about it because the pillar for this community is this community. We have certain things we don't talk about like politics, specifically who you should vote for. But we do talk about things like get out to the polls. We don't force people to talk about things they don't wanna talk about. You can mention that there's a panel called Dear White Parents. What you will not do is berate somebody for attending that panel or for posting about it. So that's the difference in just sitting back back and letting the comments go crazy and reminding people of essentially their place. And I, as, uh, as, as Christina was saying about, you know, letting people know who you are, sometimes you gotta let them know who you are. It's not always easy. Um, on this side, on one side of the camera, you like, here's what you are not gonna do. But you just have to put a little bit of a corporate twist on it. But my favorite way of handling those poisonous communities for myself is, um, you know, uh, what do they say? Each one teach one. I allow my story to be the textbook for the next person. And I'm also collecting textbooks. I'm trying to get as many people in that community to understand why we have the foundation that we have. Find your most popular people within the community. Make them your community managers. Make, if you know somebody in that community that is super vocal and they are living the pillars of your community, make that person your leader. Make that person your top. Bring them over to your side. Bring them into the fold because they are going to be the textbook for the rest of your members. And it, it kind of creates sort of a foundation or a, you know, a board of members, essentially. And it's just like, they're the ones who are always talking. Ask those questions that get a positive conversation going. Somebody's talking about dear white parents, you can ask a question of why did this make you angry? Why do you find this controversial? Get the conversation going. Find the why behind the poison. And be a textbook. Be open. Be there for somebody to read. I love that. Um, so many tactical strategies that people can use ASAP, you know, um, because it, it does happen, right? This is life. People are not perfect. Even, even us, right? We get it wrong at times. So, um, yeah, I love the vulnerability in what you said. I'm not surprised. I knew you would be. Um, 
And thank you for those those tips, right? When we see the elephant in the room, whether we're shy or not, introverted or not, you know, I think Sharon did a beautiful job of explaining the different tactics you can use, right? You don't have to be someone else, right? Um, but you need to be proactive in, in addressing, right? So it's whether whether it's deputizing, you know, your most popular folks, you know, um, or you laying the rules down and saying, hey, this is what you signed up for now. You know, the policies haven't changed now. Um, or even getting feedback, right? Which you're not trying to indoctrinate anyone, but just, you know, highlighting the perspectives. I think that's fire, right? Like putting the perspectives on display so that different people can find themselves, right? And what was articulated, um, I think is beautiful. And um, I think as a leader, Sharon, you are, you're, you're showing that a leader doesn't have to do it all. Like, I love how you are mentioning just ways to either automate it with tech or use your other people. Like, if you're doing it all, you're doing it wrong, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, I love, love, love this. Okay. So um, I want to think, I want to make things practical, right? Um, if you all could, I'm going to, I'd like each of you to kind of give your, your tidbit here. If you could give some steps, right, that entrepreneurs can take today to create the communities of their dreams, what would those steps be? Shelly, let's start with you. Um, first and foremost, I would, again, I would just say, and this cannot be reiterated enough in this conversation, be your authentic self, be vulnerable. Um, I, I didn't hear it mentioned during this talk, so I'll be the one to drop it. Like, imposter syndrome I've never even heard of that because I'm like I can do anything so um if you are struggling with imposter syndrome please get out of your head please walk one foot in front of the other move your needle forward because if you make a mistake everybody makes mistakes there's always a new chance to try again if you don't hit the nail on the head and you learn along the way <clears throat> but what I would say is number one engage in the audience that you identify with engage in the audience that you want to run with, you know, make yourself a part of a village and a community that you're interested in. And then in turn, you'll get that feedback. And, you know, I'm more of a, I like Instagram a lot. I like to engage on there. It's very easy for me. When you're making your post, uh, don't just post something, post a question with an A or a B or post to, you know, the thing where it says you can, people can write something in that box because that's going to be engagement. And then another thing I say is identify people who you want to work with that you look up to slide in their DMs. You miss every shot you don't take. So, and then when, when you sign their DMs, because if somebody goes in my DMs, I immediately go to their page and be like, is this person a robot or what's happening? So slide in people's DMs. For sure, I'm an in-person person too. So you see somebody, you meet them, tell them what you're about. Be authentic and be vulnerable to, to expose yourself to in order to get that collaborative and build that community. Um, so that's what that that's my takeaway. And that's what I like to do. I like other people's stuff all the time. So then in turn, they like me. I post stuff for brands all the time. They repost my stuff, drives my needle forward. So um, they wouldn't do that if I wasn't engaged with them. So maybe get outside of yourself and look at what, be the mirror, be a mirror. That's what I would say. Beautiful. Thank and you don't so be an imposter syndrome, okay? Okay. <laughs> do it scared, sis, do it scared. Um, all right, Christina, uh, what are the steps that you would advise uh, entrepreneurs to take if they wanna start their communities today? I am going to go with uh, what Shelly said, definitely starting off by being authentic, be true to who you are. Um, it's so important that you start there because again, you don't want to be creating a community of fake people because it ain't going to last. It's not going to last and it's going to actually aggravate you. You don't want to deal with that. Um, so be true to who you are so you can attract who is for your community. So, so important. Um, again, as Shelly said, uh, definitely engagement. Engagement is important. And I love how Sharon described it, asking those questions, um, putting it out there, because even if there's a, a conflict, right, it can be a healthy conflict if you turn it and pose it into a question. And so I think that that's so important is making sure that you're engaging with your community. Um, and also, if you make a mistake, just own up to it, right? We don't talk about that. Like when you build a community, sometimes you make mistakes. Just own up to it and say, hey, listen, I am so sorry. I apologize. I made this mistake. Um, what do you think is a better way that we could do this? You know, so um, have, have your community feel empowered to help build the community um, by just 
asking those questions. Um, also, I want to touch on what she said about the imposter syndrome. A mentor said this to me and I never forgot it. So I'm glad you brought this up, Shelly, because a lot of people do struggle with imposter syndrome. But once I heard this, it changed everything for me. And I pray that it does the same for everyone here is that if you are dealing with imposter syndrome, that means that you are not trusting God. Because how can you be an imposter of what God created? There's no way. And so just remember who you are and who you are. Um, and I'm not trying to push that on anyone if, if that's not your belief. But for those of you who don't know, who do know who God is, you can't be an imposter of what God created. And so there's no such thing as imposter syndrome. Um, as Casey said, do it scared. Do it. Uh, my truth. I do everything afraid, literally everything afraid. Um, see, I'm not, we're not the only ones, right? We do everything afraid. But because we do it afraid, we hit number one, you have to get it done, right? And number two, you allow somebody else to get it done too. So just go out there and make it happen. And if you make a mistake along the way, own up to it and learn from your mistakes. Ask those data questions. Do the data research that uh, Casey was talking about. Just keep going. Keep going. Ashe, Ashe. Thank you so much, Christina. Uh, Rafi, what are the steps that you would advise an entrepreneur to take if they want to start a community today? Yes. One important thing I think is that if you don't want to be on a particular platform, don't build your community there. If you don't like Facebook, don't build your, don't build your community on Facebook. Okay. There's so many options out there. And then number two is when you're starting a community and you only have one person nurture and pull that red carpet out for that one person. Like they are the thing. Okay. Because community start with one people, one person, you don't start with a hundred people in your community. So don't get discouraged, just value that person, jump on Zoom calls every week with them, do something, just make it happen because one will lead to a hundred, will lead to a thousand and so on. So that's my two practical things. You do not have to be on Facebook for your community and start with one and treat them like a diamond that they are. Ashe, love, love, love that. Um, and then Sharon, what about you? What are the steps you would tell entrepreneurs to take if they want to create a community today? These ladies have already said such amazing things. And I just want to say to Christina, I tell people that if you don't agree with the, with the God in my message or the God in the message you are receiving, replace it with the deity that you need. Just plug it in there. There you go. Um, for me, I will say that it is, it's, it's something that I've been, it's the, the motto for all of my companies. It's support, advocate, inspire. Support the businesses, the women, the creatives, the men, the products that you love. Support them authentically. Everybody's talking about authenticity. So yes, if you love something, say that you love it. I don't care if it's a pack of cigarettes. Say that you love it. If that's what you love. I never, and no cigarettes are taboo. I'm not a smoker, but I'm just saying, I was trying to think of something taboo. If you love it, say that you love it. Show your support because it shows people who you are. It does. It shows people who you are. It does. Show your support for the people, the places, and the things that you love. Advocate. When you advocate for the causes that mean something to you, you pour in, when you pour into those causes, when you pour into communities that matter to you, when you pour into LGBTQI communities, then people know what you stand for. People know that she, her in your, in your, um, in your title on Zoom is not just there for show. They know that you actually mean it because you're showing that you advocate and that you are an inclusive community. And inspire, get your butt out there and talk to people. Like she said, how are you helping anybody by being quiet? I did that for way too long. I did it for way too long. And like she said, answer them DMs. When them DMs come in, how you gonna inspire somebody if you're not paying attention? Casey DMs me and it took me a few days to even realize it was there, but I answered. I answered, I'm so glad I did. Thank you. Inspire, talk to people, get your voice heard because there is no you in a room that you don't show up to. Who is going to represent you and the people that look like you if you're not there to do it? 
So that those are my steps, support, advocate, inspire, and you will build community right there. Amen. Ladies, this conversation has been so rich. So, 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 so rich. Um, I couldn't imagine it being any more impactful, um, vulnerable, transformative. Um, thank you so much. I've enjoyed the last hour immensely. I know that everyone listening has as well. Um, so before we sign off, um, if each of you could go around the horn and say one word, one word, just one word without context um, to, to deposit into the spirits of everyone listening today who has not seen their stomach, but want to be like you. <laughs> want to do the cool things that you all are doing. Um, please leave us with that one word and then we'll sign off. Um, Christina, start with you. Go. Mm, Ashe. Shelly, we'll move over to you. Projection. Mm, love it. Sharon, you next. Gratitude. Gratitude, Ashe. Rafi, and you? Intention. Intention, Ashe. And I will say, believe. We love you all. We celebrate you. We believe in you fiercely. <laughs> and we're so happy that you spent this hour with us. Thank you so much. Goodbye.